Graduation is just six months away and Class 3E at Kunigagoka High School still hasn't been able to eliminate the octopus teacher. The creature that destroyed part of the moon will do the same to Earth, if not stopped by March next year. It is notable that the students' fighting skills have evolved a lot since they started the quest, but still it's not enough to destroy the yellow monster. As in a few months the whole class would be going through graduation, Koro-sensei takes the opportunity to ask one by one which career they plan to follow. Some students intend to enter politics, others opt for diplomacy. Karma, for example, wants to become a civil servant and so everyone has been revealing their plans for the future, except Nagisa. The boy was the only one in his class who still didn't know what he wanted to do after graduating from high school. Koro-sensei suggests that the boy think of something he can use his talent for assassinations on, as of all the students in the class he was the most skilled. Later, before class, Tadaomi informs the students about a school festival taking place next weekend. He emphasizes that this is a great chance for the students to complete their mission, as the event will take place in an open space and will include students from other schools, as well as several residents of the city. Therefore, Koro-sensei's attention will be scattered and the best time to attack him is precisely when he is most distracted. Tadaomi further reveals that the Ministry of Defense will send a sniper named Red Eye to ensure the alien is eliminated. Finally, the man warns that if the students are going to be responsible for destroying their teacher, they would have to hurry up and do it before the sniper does. Then Koro-sensei arrives in the room and claims to be looking forward to the festival and as this would be a great opportunity for his students to be able to eliminate him, he decides to reveal his biggest weakness. The octopus says its greatest skill is speed, but it doesn't have much strength. If the students held his tentacles, he would not be able to move and would be susceptible to any attack. Hearing this, the students try to hold him back, but Koro-sensei easily manages to dodge them. In fact, revealing his biggest weakness was nothing more than a strategy to get the students excited for the school festival. When the big day arrives, the octopus dresses up as a clown to socialize with people at the festival. Only the great leaders of each nation knew about his existence, therefore, he could not appear in public without a costume. While handing out flyers to the newcomers, inviting them to watch the school play, Nagisa asks his teacher to leave as people might be suspicious of his disguise. Red Eye takes advantage as Koro-sensei shows off at the entrance to the festival to make his first attack, but the creature still manages to escape. Later, the play begins and the students plan to use this moment to eliminate the teacher. Their plan was to use the audience to prevent the octopus from revealing his true form and fleeing the spectacle. Even dressed in a giant peach, Koro-sensei manages to dodge the attacks and suddenly appears next to the sniper. Within minutes, without the man noticing, he was on stage, dressed as one of the main cast members, and the audience applauded the spectacle. At the end of the play, the teacher still thanks Red Eye for participating, because thanks to him his students worked even harder to eliminate him. Minutes later, Koro-sensei heads to the school shed, where three delinquents were threatening his students. The yellow octopus wears a bizarre costume and tries to impersonate Professor Tadaomi. He then uses his tentacles to shave the boys' heads and dress them in a ridiculous outfit. After witnessing this episode, the boys are scared and leave, and Koro-sensei returns to school with his students. At the end of the festival, the octopus helps his students to store all the materials used in the play. In that instant, Kayano reveals the tentacles she was hiding around her neck. Suddenly, she starts attacking the professor. First, the girl drops water to weaken him, then uses her tentacles to strike the creature. But during the attack, the girl starts to feel severe pain and Koro-sensei approaches to try to help her. In that instant, Kayano reveals that she is Yukimura Aguri's younger sister. She accuses her teacher of being responsible for her sister's death and flees into the forest. The students ask Itana if he knew that Kayano had tentacles and the boy claims he didn't. He even says that since the girl was not receiving maintenance for her powers, she was probably in horrible pain. The class remembers that Yukimura Aguri was their old teacher and questions Koro-sensei as to why Kayano blamed him for the woman's death. The octopus claims that he will explain everything about his past, but first the students would need to find their classmate, as she also deserved to know the truth. While watching the city, Kayano recalls the day Aguri died. The girl went to her sister's lab to deliver something she had asked for. However, when she got there, she found that there had been a huge explosion. When she finally makes it to the lab, she finds her sister's body in the arms of a tentacled creature. As soon as the monster leaves, Kayano runs to Aguri and tries to wake her up, but at that moment there was no more salvation for her older sister. The girl then finds a briefcase and inside it was a syringe that contained an unknown substance. After studying the files left by her sister, she discovers that that liquid was actually used to transplant tentacles into humans. Even knowing the risks she would have to face, the girl decides to use that thing in her own body, hoping to become strong enough to get revenge on that monster. Before leaving, the creature had left a note for Aguri, 
saying that she could meet him at Kunigagoka High School, as Class 3E's teacher. Weeks later, Kayano passed the entrance exams at that school and was finally able to start her revenge plan. The next morning, Koro-sensei manages to find the girl and take her back to school, but she still hasn't given up on eliminating her teacher. Her tentacles are in flames and start chasing the octopus. Kayano's attacks possess devastating force, but if she continued like that for too long, her body could degenerate. Then, while dodging the attacks, Koro-sensei creates an afterimage of his yellow head to reveal his plan to stop the girl. He says that if the attacks continued, Kayano's life force would be sucked into the tentacles. Therefore, to prevent the girl's death, he would let her reach his most vital point, the heart. At that moment, one of the students would need to make the girl forget her bloodlust. Even knowing he could die, Koro-sensei allows Kayano to hit her heart. At that moment, Nagisa hugs the girl and gives her a kiss. The teacher manages to free himself from the tentacles and the girl's fury disappears. Koro-sensei spots the man wearing the beekeeper overalls and goes after him. When questioning him about his identity, the octopus discovers that that guy was actually Yunagizawa, the madman responsible for turning him into that creature. Later in the classroom, with all the students gathered, the teacher reveals that two years ago he was an assassin known as Shinigami. That yellow octopus that everyone believed to be an alien was a human being. His kind smile and sweet words made people easily trust him. That way, he was able to eliminate them without arousing suspicion. Shinigami was considered the best and smartest assassin today, but one day he ended up being cornered and captured by an unofficial research organization commanded by Yunagizawa Kutaro. Due to his excellent intellect and great physical strength, Yunagizawa believed that this man would be a perfect guinea pig for his experiments. The organization planned to figure out how to incorporate antimatter into the life cycle. For this, it was necessary to create an enormous amount of energy while the subject was still alive. If the experiment were a success, the living being would become an alternative energy source to oil and nuclear energy. This is how Koro-sensei met Yukimura Aguri. The woman was tasked with monitoring all the changes that took place in his body. As they introduce themselves, Yanagizawa enters the room and smacks Aguri over the head with a clipboard while ordering her to check up on the guinea pigs soon. When the psychopath leaves, the scientist reveals that this was her fiancé, who had been chosen by her parents. Then, she says that during the day she works as a teacher at a school and says that her biggest challenge is to make Class E students regain their self-confidence. In the following months, Shinigami continued to be used as a lab rat. The experiments caused his hands and feet to become constantly numb and he began to feel very cold in his neck. So, Aguri decides to give a gift to her friend. It had been a year since the day they met, and from then on, they started talking about everything. As he felt very cold in the neck, the scientist decided to present him with a tie. However, she could not deliver the gift to the Shinigami, as it was against the organization's rules. That same day, she says that from next year on she will no longer be able to be a teacher. Yunagizawa was pressuring her to leave school and go to work exclusively in the lab. But still, she wanted to use her final year in the classroom to make her students' eyes shine again. Finally, she thanks the boy for having supported her since the moment they met. Aguri states that she wishes she could touch him, and at that moment, Shinigami decides to reveal a secret. He is able to form small tentacles that pass through the cell and form a hand. That way, the young man could touch her. A few days later, Yunagizawa receives news that 70% of the moon has been destroyed. During experiments carried out on the surface of the moon, a mouse was transplanted with Shinigami's antimatter generating cells and this generated the explosion. By checking the guinea pig's cell division cycle, the scientists discovered that on March 13th of the following year the Shinigami would also explode, destroying the planet. Yunagizawa then orders his team to get rid of that thing, as it would end the cell cycle. Aguri was close by and listened to the entire conversation. She runs to tell the Shinigami about what happened and assures that she will find a way to save him. But the young man claims that he deserves to die, as he has spent most of his life killing people. However, he couldn't die without first experiencing that new power, so he decides to flee the laboratory. Shinigami uses its tentacles to destroy the glass and prepares to leave. Aguri tries to stop him but is unsuccessful. She runs to Yunagizawa and asks him to help the young man, but the madman is filled with anger and starts kicking her. At that moment, the guinea pig was ready to run away. If he left in that condition, he would probably become a dark creature with a thirst for destruction, but Aguri saved him. While he was being attacked, the woman hugs him and receives the blow instead. That was a fatal wound, no one could heal her. As her final request, she asks the boy to teach her students and help them out of the darkness. Before leaving, he takes the tie that his friend gave him as a gift. With his newfound power, he was able to transform into the creature he desired. 
That's how he became the yellow octopus and decided to dedicate his last year of life to fulfilling Yukimura Aguri's last wish. So, regardless of anything, Koro-sensei would die in March next year. Therefore, he wanted to teach his students to defeat him. The yellow monster didn't want to destroy the earth, however, he would only accept being killed by one of his students. But during the winter break, none of them had the will to devote themselves to a plan to eliminate Koro-sensei. With the return of classes, Nagisa summons his classmates for a meeting. Despite the octopus being a threat to the planet, all the students liked Koro-sensei and agreed that he was an excellent teacher. So, Nagisa suggests that Class E find a way to save him. However, the class is divided. Some students team up with Nagisa and accept the idea of looking for a way to save their teacher. Others can't let go of the idea of taking him out, after all, that's what they've been training for all this time. Karma was one of those students and challenges Nagisa to a duel that would decide Class 3E's future from now on. Nagisa starts the attack, they exchange a few blows with the anti-teacher knife, which was harmless to humans. The deal was that the first to manage to put the knife in a vital point of the opponent would be the winner. Despite Nagisa being the best when it comes to assassination skills, Karma was still faster and stronger than him. In addition to having more experience in hand-to-hand -hand combat, even injured, Nagisa keeps trying to beat his classmate. He grabs the boy and tries to immobilize him, but Karma's left arm was free and he could win the fight at any moment. However, the boy preferred to give the victory to his friend, as he saw that he was really determined to help Koro-sensei. In the end, this fight didn't decide anything. Then all the students came together to agree on what they would do about their teacher. It was unanimously decided that while all the Class E students were looking for a way to stop Koro-sensei from exploding, they would continue with the mission to eliminate him. That way, they would be able to fulfill their duty to save the planet, whether saving the professor or killing him. A few days later, Ritsu managed to collect data classified as top secret from a foreign country. This data revealed that the probability of the creature exploding in March was only 1%. She also discovered that it was possible to manufacture a medicine that would prolong Koro-sensei's life. For this, the students would need to access the initial data of the research carried out with him. The problem is that no one knew Yunagizawa's situation, who was the only one in possession of essential data from the initial survey. But Itana had an idea where the man might be hiding, as it was he who gave the boy the tentacles. The boy, along with Nagisa and Karma, heads to the laboratory and, with Ritsu's help, they managed to get the tape that contained all the data related to the research done with the professor. After accessing the information, Okuda has the help of his colleagues to create the medicine. Their first tests don't work, but after several attempts, the students manage to achieve the expected result. The next morning, the medicine to stop the professor's outburst would be ready. Meanwhile, at the Ministry of Defense, the project to put an end to the super creature is almost complete. It is a particle accelerator that was sent into space and in 170 hours it would be ready to fire the laser that would end Koro-sensei. The next morning, Tadaomi goes to the teacher's office and gives his farewell. He says graduation is coming up and soon the relationship between the two would come to an end. The octopus says that even if it is difficult, they should fulfill their professional duties. Tadaomi agrees and leaves. After leaving the facility, he calls his superiors and informs them that the super creature is alone on Class 3E's premises. By doing so, a barrier is activated to prevent Koro-sensei from escaping. Before the students can reach the school to finish their medicine and give it to the teacher, the military captures them and takes them to an underground prison. They were to be detained there until the mission to eliminate the creature was accomplished. An officer informs them that the octopus is being held in the school by a barrier, and at midnight, the organization would fire a special laser to eliminate him. Tadaomi appears soon after and the students say that they prepared a substance capable of saving Koro-sensei but the man reports that world leaders have decided to rule out any possibility of saving the creature. The decision to eliminate that monster was taken by consensus with all countries in the world and could not be overturned. After saying that, he leaves, leaving his students extremely disappointed. Karma realizes that the prison wall is made of clay, so the students set up an explosion to get the guards' attention. They pretend to be passed out, and when the military enters the cell to help them, they get up and attack them. After trapping them inside, the group of teenagers hides from the guards as they try to find their way out of that place. As they were about to escape, they meet Professor Tadaomi. The students believe that the man will try to stop them, but instead he says that he hoped it would take them less time to escape from that place. Finally, Tadaomi reminds them that the laser will fire at midnight and informs them that this will be their last mission. Once outside the prison, the students need to find a solution to dodge the soldiers. For this, they can count on the help of Irina, their English teacher. The woman says that as a graduation gift, she would act as bait so they could get away. She destroys a satellite to attract the attention of the military and asks the students to run. 
Amidst the chaos, they disperse, and little by little manage to get rid of the soldiers. They climb the mountain to get to school and a few hours later, they finally meet the teacher again. Okuda hands him the medicine and Koro-sensei thanks for the effort his students have made to help him. Everyone cheers, now their teacher could live. However, at that moment, the octopus reveals that there is no way he can escape from that place. The anti-teacher barrier surrounds the entire school, including the basement. The creature had already tried everything, but this time he was cornered. Despite this, Koro-sensei reveals that he is very happy that his students are there. He says he made a graduation certificate for each of them. However, before the professor can hand them over, Yanagizawa appears and destroys the diplomas. The man reveals that he is there to destroy the octopus, but Nagisa tells him that Koro-sensei has been medicated and will no longer blow up the earth. At this point, Yanagizawa claims that all the students' efforts were in vain, as he had tampered with the research data they used to manufacture the substance. After several times injecting a liquid into his own neck, the psychopath turns into a dark monster. In an attempt to protect his students, Koro-sensei receives a brutal attack. His tentacles and part of his head are torn apart. That way, his speed decreases and he can't dodge the next attacks. The dark creature launches him out of the school and, shortly after, uses its tentacles to throw him onto the roof. His appearance resembles a tree with demonic roots, which he uses to try to pierce the professor's body. Severely injured, Koro-sensei no longer has the strength to defend himself and ends up taking a huge beating. Seeing his teacher almost dead, Kayano sneaks in front of him and asks the octopus to run away. But the monster soon attacks her, causing a serious wound to her stomach. Koro-sensei holds the girl in his tentacles as she apologizes for attacking him a few weeks earlier. Then she loses consciousness and Yanagizawa says that the two sisters died right in front of the octopus and he couldn't do anything to save them. By saying this, he awakens the great fury of Koro-sensei, who releases an enormous amount of energy capable of disintegrating the creature. After eliminating his greatest enemy, the teacher takes Kayano inside the school and uses his healing ability to save her. He had dedicated the last year to developing this technique and never having to go through the same situation that happened to Aguri. By the end of the surgery, Koro-sensei was exhausted, but all his effort was worth it, as Kayano was alive. As all the students were gathered, the professor asks them to finish their mission before they fire the laser and he is eliminated. At this point, none of the students wanted to go ahead with the mission to kill Koro-sensei, however, unanimously, they all decide that this is the best thing to do. Otherwise, their teacher would be killed by the government. The students then gather around the octopus and hold each of his tentacles. That way he couldn't escape. Nagisa was tasked with doing the hardest part. He picks up the anti-teacher knife and prepares to deliver the final blow. Koro-sensei says he is proud of his students and is grateful for the last year they spent together. The octopus points out that they have become great human beings and says that he is very happy that he could be killed by their hands. At that time, Nagisa starts to shake. His heart is broken, but Koro-sensei asks him to keep calm and smile. Even against his will, the boy says goodbye to his teacher and pierces his heart. Before departing, Koro-sensei congratulates the class on graduation with a beautiful smile and then his body transforms into energy and dissipates. However, his core remains and, before disappearing completely, he travels to say goodbye to his colleagues. The military notices that the creature's vitals have disappeared, and soon Tadaomi understands what has happened. Professor Irina is the first to receive a visit, then Tadaomi, who is touched by the death of his colleague. That day, Nagisa finally finds out what he wants to do after graduating. A few years later, he returns to Class E of Kunigigoka High School. The place is completely dirty and destroyed. Nagisa goes up the stairs and is startled to see two boys fighting. Upon arriving in the classroom, the students mock him as they do not believe that such a young guy can be a teacher. Even though he is cornered, he asks the students to sit down, as the class will begin. One of the delinquents threatens to kill him, but that word has the opposite effect on him for most people. For class 3E students, this is a magic word that gives them courage and confidence. Nagisa looks up to Koro-sensei and promises to do her best to make him proud. Despite not being as fast or as smart, the boy is determined to become as good a teacher as he is. After simulating an attack on the student who threatened him, Nagisa wishes the boy good luck in trying to kill him, stating that he has until graduation to do so. That was the end of the story of Koro-sensei and his students. And do you guys think Nagisa will be able to educate the new class 3E students?